I'm John. We're doing a lube job today. It's a 2002 Forester. It's got an EJ25. Let's get this thing out of here and get it started. It's a 3,200 pound car, all wheel drive, 2.5 Boxster motor, pumping out 165 Herspers. There's our monstrous 165 horsepower motor here. We're gonna get this piece of shit out of here. And bring this guy back in. That's a sweet, uh, that lift right there is a bend pack lift. I got that off at of jags.com. <clears throat> it's a pretty good lift. It costs about $3,000. It's really cool. It's open in the front so you could actually do a transmission or exhaust. That's the biggest question I get. Here we go. We're gonna get some oil going. We're gonna pop the oil drain plug here. See some dirty oil come out of that. Let's make sure we catch all of the oil. There we go. And of course, naturally the filter is gonna be next. So this filter was actually pretty hard to get off of here. I had to put a rag around that and then just went ahead and used the, that strap to get her off. It really wasn't all that bad. This car sat for a really long time before I got it, so not surprised that we're gonna have to do some head gaskets. I did use a torque wrench on this, so don't freak out everybody. I didn't film everything. This is just supposed to be a real fast video to show you the details of how it's done and give you some good camera angles instead of having it shot from 10 feet away from the car. Always oil up that filter there. Good old dad knowledge right there. Here we go. This is a transmission. We're gonna take this transmission uh, drain plug out here. This transmission is actually kind of cool. It's got that, uh, the transmission filter there, the oil filter for the transmission. That's pretty cool. I think I got about four and a half quarts out of this guy. It holds, let me see here. It holds 12.9 quarts and that's a 16 millimeter. The filter comes off the same exact way as a regular oil filter. It was not that easy to get off. I think I lost some footage for that. You don't want to watch all of the details anyhow. Make sure we drain out everything that we can. Put it back on. I took all of the extra fluid and I put it into a a one gallon container, an oil container, so I could see exactly how much fluid came out. And then I just put in how much came out. Cleaned up that, that's not a new drain plug, I just had to clean it up. I don't usually clean everything intensively, I know some people do. I just like to clean up what I'm working on, get moving on to the next thing. I'm gonna pull this whole motor out of this guy and do head gaskets and probably like a half, half ass rebuild here, so. Sixteen millimeters. I don't have the torque specs on these. I did torque them. That's a torque wrench. Here we go. Front differential. We're just gonna crack this buddy loose. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Breaker bar. All of the bolts and and uh, drain plugs on this car are extremely tight. So I put them back on to torque spec, of course. Everything we're doing here on this car is essentially just pulling a drain plug, draining out fluid, maybe changing a filter, and then putting new fluid back in. The front trans, or, or sorry, the front diff here is 1.28 liters and this one is the the diff that needs friction additive if you lift it up and turn your tires you'll realize that the front end of this car is the uh, limited slip side so i put the uh, 8090 gls in that the rear takes basically the rest of two liters it's a 0.08 so that's a 7590 weight I basically just bought one liter of each and I used the rest of the rear in the front. 
This car's not a BMW. I don't think it's going to matter that much. This guy's just a half inch drive here. I don't know if that's actually what you're supposed to use, but I went looking for a socket for that and they don't, they don't sell a square socket. So I just used my wrench with an extension on it. And uh, you can see they're super tight on here. I practically stripped the bottom one. So be really careful when you're doing this. You don't wanna strip these guys out and have to buy another one. That means you can't put your car back together right away and go drive it. This car had perfect amount of fluid in the rear end there. I like to see a little drip come out of these differentials. Here we go. Let's strip this son of a... Oh, oh, oh. No, we're not going to strip it. We got it. Make sure that sucker's all the way in there when you turn. <laughs> This rear diff was really, really tight. Really tight. Once again, that's a 7590 weight that I put back into this rear diff. From all the information I got online, it's not super, super specific. As long as you're reasonable in your gear oil, it's gonna be fine. So you can see the way this lift works actually in this shot. Those wheels right there roll forward and backwards. So the one side of the lift actually travels in and out. The other side of the lift just stays static. It's really useful. I, I, I like it a lot. I'm not a big fan of jack stands, especially when you got to get a lot of wrenching on these parts. The lift is just so much faster and if you're going to if you're going to be taking cars apart all the time, you might as well just invest into a lift. It's it's really not that big of a price for the safety. Funny story there, actually, how I got that was I was working on uh, the E46 that you saw there, and we were making a manual swap, doing the manual swap on that from the SMG. Yeah, these these filler hoses don't really they don't really stay in there, and th this took a really long time to get the fluid in there. I think I'm going to make you watch the entire thing. I didn't edit this out, did I? Oh, well. Let's tell the Beamer story anyway. So, yeah, I had the, the Beamer lift up on jack stands. And I was thinking about buying a lift. I was pricing them out and kind of joking about it. And then uh, my Harbor, Harbor Freight uh, jack, it kind of torqued to the side. The scissors torqued to the side a little bit when I was dropping down the car. And it, and it fell like two inches. But just the fact that it... It fell unexpectedly. I just felt way more comfortable with just buying a lift. And it's not even a waste of money. I'm pretty sure that any time I need to sell that lift, I can sell it for exactly what I bought it for. Um, those lifts are actually really hard to uh, find a place that's not going to be ridiculous about the shipping of the lift. So, Jags, Jags, everybody. Not sponsored, but if somebody at Jegs wants to sponsor me, that'd be pretty cool. The pump just was not working. It's going to take way too long, so I just poured it all out in there. There, good old backyard mechanic cleanup job for you. Torque these bad boys down, and, and that's basically how you do this full lube job right here. You just uh, pop a bunch of drain plugs, find some torque specs, use the sockets that fit, and uh, this is a great intro in building your confidence on uh, working on a, a car at home. Plus, if you, if you get a used car, this is a really, really... Um, fun project you know just a couple hours one day might take you a little bit longer than it took me because of the lift but really like 15 extra minutes is not a big deal jacking a car up and down see all that oil on that on that right side on the passenger side over there that is uh that's a head gasket leak right there 
I have a spark plug video that I'm going to be working on after this and you'll see in the spark plug video that there's a bunch of oil on each of the spark plugs and uh, <laughs> it's pretty obvious what's going on there so I'm just gonna drive this thing around until the summer and then uh, when it gets a little bit warmer I'm gonna pull that engine out of there and we're gonna have a little fun with it and we're gonna put it back in and hopefully that transmission stands up I've heard uh, these transmissions aren't the most reliable and they're a little hard to get a hold of so I might actually start looking for a replacement uh, in the future I do suggest that you use a funnel for this I am just lazy and I try to I've always tried to challenge myself with this I'm like can I pour it in without pouring it all over the engine so that's just me being stupid but I mean feel free to pour oil all over your engine if you want to if you want to be like me <laughs> the oil is 4.2 quarts and uh, that's yeah that's I don't even know what the, I think it's 10 w30 I'm pretty sure it's 10 w30 once again, I really don't think if you pour, you know, 2030 in there or 530, like it's probably not going to be a huge deal. Although I would obviously look up what the proper oil is for your car. This air box comes out super easy. I'm sure it's been out before. It's uh, two small hexes. I think they're tens. And then uh, Flathead gets that band off of there. Or you could use the eight, I believe, that is uh, on the band. We get in there to the diff and just pour a little fluid in there. It's a little sneaky to find back in there, but... Uh, I'll show you a nice view of it. We don't have a view of the transmission dipstick. You can see it right there. It's not hard to find. There's just not a good shot I could give you of that. It was just basically a bunch of vacuum hoses and heater hoses, so I spared you the trouble on that one. Uh, I'll let you watch me pour oil all over my engine instead. got six quarts of oil out of this guy it's just basic ATF fluid nothing special I like Valvoline it's just what I used when I was started when I was 16 so I tend to look for Valvoline I like it when I was 16 I had a 71 El Camino that I put the they came out with high mileage oil back then and I, <laughs> I always felt comfortable with having the high mileage the old El Camino had something like 300,000 miles on the old 350 in there. My pops built it back after it was uh, it was completely totaled out. And when I was a kid, he built that thing back with a, a Chevelle SS. I think it was a 70. It might have been a 71. But he, he basically rebuilt the entire front end of that car. And then a girl rear-ended me while I was driving it and totaled that sucker out. So that was fun. It was actually a pretty painful 40 mile an hour accident. She, she really she really hit the back of that car. You can count the quarts of oil that I'm putting in here. I think I've shot four quarts going in. I really should have probably edited this down. Here we go. Here goes the, the diff, the front diff here. It's a sneaky little guy down in there. Mine was all covered in uh, greasy and grimy stuff, so I had to clean it off before I shot that for you. Of course, I wiped out my uh, funnel. Yes, that's the same funnel, but I did wipe it out, of course. I cleaned it up. I love that little light right there. That thing lasts forever. I left it in a ceiling at my job once and it was still on two days later. It was on the low setting with the big battery, but that's still really impressive. 
Milwaukee makes some good stuff. I'm not disappointed. I'm not a fanboy, but I'm not disappointed. Of course I went with the royal purple here. I like royal purple. Just don't use it in the rear diff of an E46 M3. Go with the actual uh, BMW rear diff fluid because it's got more friction additive in it than this stuff. and That'll make a weird squealing noise in that one. But other than that, like I really like that royal purple stuff. It's, it's pretty good. Here's the rest of the rear diff fluid that I used in there, the 0.2 liters. I haven't had any problems yet. Been driving this little guy around for a while like that. I'm sure it's fine. And then we just put it all back together and uh, that's about it. Coming in hot with that air box. If you're a little nervous about working on your car, just take this air box out and put it back in. That's, that's a pretty harmless activity. Throw a K&N air filter in there. Always run K&Ns in my, in my stuff. I dry out the one that's in my E46 though. I just don't want to ruin the uh, mass airflow sensor with the oil in there. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Ask me any questions you got. Comments are good. Thanks. One last little clampy guy and uh, I think that'll do it. I think that's a basic lube job on a Forester. You can tell we're done with the slap. You always got to slap it to let her know that you're finished. Kind of like when you're petting a dog. You give him a little pat on his butt. Tell him to get out of here. No big deal. Just risking my life right there for, for a lube job. <laughs> it always makes me nervous going under there without the safety. We've got quite a bit of oil on the exhaust with my awesome pouring there. So you'll see here a bunch of oil <laughs> getting burnt off into the camera. It's kind of fun looking. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't remember what was going on there, but something. Got the little exhaust coming there, and there's definitely some oil smoke coming out of underneath that thing as well. <laughs> 